Shalom, most high in Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. I'm Brother Jacob, and to my left, I'm Brother Joab. And tonight we're going into the world, but according to John. According to John. So, um, not according to Pastor or the World Council of Churches or the Catholic Church, but according to John. What John means by world. So, as usual, let's start out with uh, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 11. Shalom, most high Christ, blessed, happy Sabbath. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 11. And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, mm -hmm. and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God. Right. So we're to go to our people, which would be the so-called blacks and Hispanics, that 
fit the curses, whose fathers are of Negro and Indian descent, spread throughout the earth, carried into different captivities, because our people are everywhere. Like in India, you have the Sidis. And in, I don't know what they're called in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, but it's documented that our people are there. So this has to go out to our people. Go ahead. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Right. Regardless of what they do about it, it's our job to take the message to them. We try to win our people over. We really do. We try to win them over. But that's not on us. We What we're supposed to do, take the message to our people. So tonight we're getting into, um, you know, I guess you could say John 3.16. Mm -hmm. But when you're reading the book of John, he repeatedly uses the word world like no one else. He uses world all the time. So we're going to go through some scriptures and mainly in the book of John showing you who that world is. It's not what everybody teaches. It definitely ain't what everybody teaches because they're looking at it through their own eyes, not through the eyes of an Israelite. Someone that these laws, statutes, and commandments was given to, and they had to keep them or else. Keep that in mind. Um, so let's start out with the book of Second Ezra, chapter 14. I'm sure y'all ain't hear that, but that's my ninja. <laughs> the pressure winding down on my ninja. <laughs> uh, Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. <clears throat> the book of Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. For the world have lost his youth. Right, the world has lost his youth. Go ahead. And the times begin to wax old. Mm -hmm. So the world has lost its youth, and the times um, began to wax old. So it's talking about the world. Go ahead. Verse 11. For the world is divided into 12 parts. Hold up. Mm. Hold up. So I thought the world was divided up into like five different parts. Like you had five land masses and water. This world mm -hmm. that Ezra is talking about mm -hmm. is divided into 12 parts. Right. Hmm. Go ahead. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead. And have of a 10th part. So, the world is divided into 12 parts and 10 parts of it are gone already. Mm -hmm. 10 parts are gone already. So this world is obviously talking about the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, the children of Jacob. And it's saying 10 parts are already gone. So the world, uh, 10 parts didn't fall apart from the world. This world is the children of Israel. Give me, uh, let's back up to chapter 13 and verse 40. So what is going into, the ten tribes are gone already, is talking about the split that happens when you read uh, 1 Kings 11, 12, around through there. People don't, you know, people really don't do their research and search the scriptures to find out what's really going on. That is, it was prophesied that there would be a split. So it's paramount, paramount to know about the split. It's paramount. If you don't know about the split, you don't understand why there's two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Why you have what's called the Jews. You'll see in the New Testament, you'll see House of Judah, and then you'll see it will say Israel. And then you'll be confused. Like they are in Christianity, because they think all Israel is Jews. Right. Judah is one freaking tribe. But you had 
the Levites and Benjamites followed them, and they were known as the Southern Kingdom. Southern Kingdom, that leaves <coughs> ten other tribes, because you had Levites scattered among the other ten. That was their job. Right. So read that. <clears throat> the book of Second Edges, chapter 13 and verse 40. Mm -hmm. Those are the ten tribes, which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king. When Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, mm -hmm. and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Right, so they went on the other side of the Euphrates. But see, this is what it meant when he said ten, ten parts of it are gone already, right. the ten tribes. So the world is the Israelites. Now, uh, Isaiah 45 and 17. So what we're doing, we're touching on a couple of scriptures showing you that Israel is the world before we even go to the book of John. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Mm -hmm. Yea, shall not I'm sorry. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Right. So Israel is that world without end. This is one nation of people that ain't never going to have no end. Right. So Israel is the world that John is talking about. Even Paul talks about this world. We're going to touch on that too. So let's go to John. Now before we go to since we just hit Isaiah, let's go to Ephesians first. Ephesians 3 and 21. Speaking of Paul. <clears throat> Let me get it. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. So the church is talking about the children of Israel. The church is the church of the firstborn, which Israel is the firstborn. The Lord said that. And Christ is the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. World without end. Amen. So the same church. That's in the Old Testament is the same church that's in the New Testament. Israel. And Israel is that world. Now, John chapter 1. <clears throat> you know, I said this before. I kind of gravitate towards John. I don't know why, but I gravitate towards like the way he wrote. So start at verse 1. Okay. This is the book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. So in the beginning um, was the Word, and the Word was with God. So the Father created Christ. Go ahead. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Right. So the Father created Christ, who is the Alpha and Omega, meaning the first and the last. The Father created him, and he had Christ create everything else. Go ahead. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So Christ is the light of men. What man? Talking about the Israelite man and woman. Go ahead. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Right, because people that are walking in sin, they don't see the light. They're adverse to the light. They don't even understand the light. Go ahead. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Mm -hmm. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Right, so all men might believe through this light, which is Christ. 
He's Christ is prophesied all the way back to Genesis three, right. and then you hear about him again in uh, Deuteronomy eighteen, how he had to come and how you have to hearken. Israel has to hearken unto him. He's going to show you how to walk in the laws. So how could this man be sent for other people? It makes absolutely no sense. Go ahead. Verse 8. He was not that light. John wasn't that light. Go ahead. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Right. He was supposed to prepare the way for Christ. That's why he's baptizing people before Christ is even baptized. But go ahead. That was the true light. Which light of every man that cometh into the world. So every man that cometh into the world. He's the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So, <clears throat> watch this y'all. Let's go to Isaiah. As I do so often. Isaiah chapter 9. If you want to see prophecies of Christ. Mm. The book of Isaiah yes. and the book of Psalms. Those are like my main two. When I'm looking at them, I'm like, yo. But watch this, y'all. Start at verse 6. Because <clears throat> this is the prophecy of Christ. Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And his name shall be called. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Many titles for Christ. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Let's of the ahead. increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment. And with justice from henceforth, even forever, mm -hmm. the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Right. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, pay attention real close right here. These next couple of verses, they're going to be pivotal. Go ahead. Verse 8. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. Stop. Mm -hmm. Remember, in the beginning was the word. Right. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. Jacob is that world. He sent the word into Jacob. Go ahead. And it hath lighted upon Israel. It lighted. He's that light. light. Mm -hmm. It lighted upon Israel. The world. Verse 9. Verse 9. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim, an inhabitant of Samaria. Even Ephraim. So Ephraim was the lead tribe, the rulers of the northern kingdom, mm -hmm. right? And the inhabitant of Samaria. We're going to read this. We're going to read we're going to read this in the New Testament. Right. Um but here this is your world, the northern and the southern kingdom. It said the Lord sent a word, which is Christ, into Jacob, and it have lighted that light upon Israel, that's your world. Um, finish verse 9, and then we'll go back to John 1. That say in the pride and stoutness of heart. Right, you good. Now, back to John 1. And pick up where we left off. Uh, verse 10. The book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 10. Read 9 again. Yeah, read that again. Okay. Verse 9. That was the true light. Christ, that lighteth upon uh, Israel. Go ahead. Which light up every man that cometh into the world. Right. There's your context. The world is Jacob. Both, uh, both kingdoms, northern and southern kingdom. Verse 10. Verse 10. He was in the world. Hold on. He was in the world. Right. Who did Christ come amongst? The children of Israel. Christ, when you read through the scriptures, Christ did not deal with people of the other nations. Even when he dealt with Pontius Pilate and his life 
was at stake. He didn't say nothing. He said, are you the king of Israel? He said, thou sayest. <laughs> like, do what you got to do. I came here for a reason. To give my life for the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the world was made by him. Mm, the world was made by him. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Go ahead. And the world knew him not. Right. They knew him not. Go ahead. Verse 11. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. Now who would be his own? Mm. Now Christ was from the tribe of Judah. Descendant of King David. The leaders, the scepter ain't supposed to depart from David. Now, so the leaders, your scribes, Pharisees, and priests, those were the people that he came amongst. That's why he was always in the daggone synagogue. They received him not. Even in the prophecy, when you go into Psalms, he knew they weren't going to receive him. He still had to do what he had to do. They were going to reject him and have him put to death. Uh, go ahead. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Right, like Joseph of Arimathea. People that, um, Jews that believed on Christ. Cause don't, so don't believe that lie right. that the Jews didn't believe on. It was the leaders that rejected him. He had thousands following him. Go ahead. <clears throat> Even to them that believe on his name. Which were born not of not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Right, but of God. And the Christians go crazy with this verse right here. What this means that is the, is the Father's will that Christ should come, give His life. I don't understand. They be twisting that. They be turning some scriptures up. Right. It's God's. He said from the beginning, Deuteronomy, He was going to send the Son. For Israel, Israel had to hearken unto him or it would be required of you. Right. So where do you get that? I don't understand what they be saying. But go ahead. Verse 14. Yeah, verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Uh-huh. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. So who is that world? Who is the world John talking about? The children of Israel yet again. He dwelt among us. Go ahead. And we, because, because they'll say he came to his own, his own received him not. Right. But it said he, he dwelt among us. He came among Israel, his people. Go ahead. And we beheld his glory, mm. the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Right. You full of grace. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you finish that. Finish okay. that. Finish that. Full of grace and truth. All right, now um, let's jump down to verse 29. <laughs> the book of St. John, chapter 1, and verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Right. Taketh away the sin of the world. The commandments is only given to the world of Israel. Christ only came to give his life for the children of Israel, the world. This is not, this stuff is not hard. The hardest thing for us to do is overcome the lies that we've been taught year after year after year. The Lamb of God. This goes back to, which we hit in one of our previous classes, mm -hmm. the promise made to Abraham. Mm -hmm. When he was going to sacrifice Isaac. And he said, the Lord will send the lamb. Yep. This is what it's talking about. So they knew he was going to send his only son. They understood this. That's why he said, um, that's why with John saw him. He said, this is the lamb, the, the lamb of God that take up away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. They understood. They weren't blinded with Christianity. Go ahead. Verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Read that part again so they can hear it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 31. 
and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. He should be made manifest to Israel. Not all uh, people that are upon the face of the earth right. manifest to Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? Okay, you can drop that. Now let's go to John chapter 3, the famous chapter. <laughs> Give me verse, uh, start at verse 14. Okay. Now, other brothers have done, you know, plenty of breakdowns on John 3.16. We don't even need to go there. We're just going to stay right here. You see, this world that John is talking about is Israel. That's his way of saying um, Israel. Like when you're dealing with Paul, Paul will say the saints or the church or my brethren. Those are the words he uses. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The book of St. John, chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right. So you have to believe on Christ. You have to. Because the Father said so. Right. And he said, if you don't follow the words, his words, that I'm going to give him, if you don't follow them, it's going to be required of you. So... Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. If you don't believe in him, you're done. You condemn. Matter of fact, we're going to read that. Go ahead. Verse 16. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. Just like Abraham mm -hmm. did with Isaac. Right. The Lord ain't let him go through with it, but he was about to do it. So he sent his only son to, re to redeem Israel. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. Go ahead. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Right. So he didn't send Christ to condemn Israel. See, Israel already broke the covenant. Right. And they're supposed to be destroyed. We were supposed to be destroyed. But no, the father had mercy. He sent his son. Go ahead. But that the world through him might be saved. The world through Christ might be saved. So we went, uh, did a couple classes dealing with the law. He gave, because of our disobedience, he gave his life so that we could get life through him. Right. Not other people. Other people are not in the covenants. They're not. This world is the children of Israel. It's all 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 18. He that believeth, believeth on him is not condemned. Right. Just go back to Deuteronomy 18. Go ahead. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Right. The only begotten Son of God. So, just like the stuff we've been bringing out lately. You have to understand what's going on in the Old Testament to understand fully what you're reading in the New. So just like uh, Abraham was going to give his son, the father gave his to give us a chance to repent. If we don't follow him, we're condemned. We don't do what Christ said. We don't follow the laws like Christ showed us how to follow him. Then our spirit is going to be destroyed. That's our, so this is our chance. Go ahead, uh, verse 19. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation, mm -hmm. that light is coming to the world. And that light is Christ. So light is coming to the world. He came among his people. Go ahead. And men loved darkness rather than light. Men loved sin rather than righteousness. Go ahead. Because their deeds were evil. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Our people are evil, and we don't want to leave off from sin. We want, don't want to leave off from those deeds. Right. Go ahead, verse 20. For Amen. everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They hate Christ. Dang. Like in when they complained to Moses, they said, We loathe this light bread. And well, Christ is that bread mm -hmm. that came down from heaven. Just like they hated that, they hate Christ. Mm -hmm. 
All these similar tools, man. We just read right over top of it. Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Right. They want to continue in sin. They don't want that correction. They want to stay like it is. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Right. You keep commandments, you're going to come to Christ. He that doeth truth, and truth is the commandments, and is Christ. Right. Go ahead. That his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Right. Now, let's go to uh, John chapter 4. And uh, start at verse 4. Okay. So we went to Isaiah 9, and it said, um, to Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria. So that's what we're going to deal with now. Um, it said, even they shall, they're going to see the light, right? Mm -hmm. Start at verse 4. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 4. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then come he to a city of Samaria, mm -hmm. which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm. Mm. So what, what, what? Joseph is what? One of the sons of God. What I mean, I'm was? sorry. One of the sons, sons of Jacob. He's still a son of God. Which is, yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> what kingdom, though? Uh, Northern kingdom. Right, so they came, they come to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to Joseph. Mm. That he gave to Joseph. That would be Northern Kingdom. In Northern Kingdom land. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So it was about lunchtime. Go ahead. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. So this was a woman of Samaria. This is how it kills me. The Christians be like, so what about the woman, the, the, the um, Samarian woman, the woman at the well? She wasn't a Jew. You're right. She's not a Jew. But she's an Israelite. We're going to read that. Go ahead. Verse 8. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Mm-hmm. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, Southern kingdom, askest a uh, drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Uh, of the Northern kingdom. So how is it you, a Jew from Southern kingdom, ask me, a uh, woman of the Northern kingdom? Go ahead. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Right. The Jews did not deal with them because they were cut off from the commonwealth of Israel. That's what you're reading in Ephesians 2. They're afar off. No way um, to the Lord through Christ. Right. Go ahead. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. Mm, the gift of repentance. Go ahead. And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So in Christ said, if you understand who I am, God. then I will give you living water. <laughs> you know, water that's going to give you everlasting life. Mm. Go ahead. Verse Hold 11. on. Now, when did Christ do this with anybody else? Right. Did, he, did he? So you have the woman in Matthew 15 and Mark chapter 7. Mm. The uh, Greek woman. Why didn't he offer her uh, living water? Right, the, the Sarah Phoenician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From hence then hast thou that living water? Yeah, like, where you, how you going to give me living water? <laughs> but watch how she starts figuring this stuff out. Right. Go ahead. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Uh, art thou greater than our father Jacob? So they of the same nation. Right. They descend through the patriarchs of Israel from Jacob. Go ahead. 
which gave us the well, mm -hmm. and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. So she's an Israelite. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of, of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drink of, of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water spring of up into everlasting life. A well of water. Mm. Now, give me, let's go to 1 Kings um, 16, 24. Prove something real quick, because your your pastors will say, "Well, Samaria was an amalgamation. It was a mix of people. They brought back people from the other lands." As you read in Kings, and they put those people in those lands in this in the uh, Israel, the Northern Kingdom of Israel, mixed among those people. Like, stop it! Christ just crushed that right there. Who he was dealing with right there? Was Israelites, period. So, um, 1 Kings 16 and 24. Go ahead and read that. The book of 1 Kings, mm -hmm. chapter 16 and verse 24. And he bought the hill. Give me 23 first. Okay. Give me just a little bit of context. Okay. Verse 23. In the 30 and first year of Isaiah, king of Judah, began Omri to reign over Israel. Mm -hmm. Twelve years, six years reigned by I'm sorry, six years reign he in Terzah. Right, so Omri, um, Omri be began to rule over Israel for 12 years, mm -hmm. right? Now, verse 24. <clears throat> verse 24. And he bought the hill Samaria of Shamar for two talents of silver. So he bought the land of Samaria. Go ahead. And built on the hill, and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shamar, owner of the hill Samaria. Right now, so he bought he bought Samaria. But our people, when you see Samaria in the scriptures, people, oh, yeah, that's other people. Jump down to twenty nine. The book of First Kings, chapter sixteen and verse twenty nine. And in the thirty and eighth year of Isaiah, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. Mm -hmm. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty and two years. So they reigned out of Samaria. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom. The capital. That's where they ruled from. So, now back to John. This, this woman of Samaria... It's not some uh, foreigner slash heathen Gentile of another nation. Of another nation. Um, now go to verse 20. Uh, hmm. 19. Okay. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Right. Go ahead. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. See, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. When you go back to Kings and Chronicles, they was worshipping damn devils. Mm. They was worshipping calves in that mountain. Go ahead. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship? Right. So... When you go to Second Chronicles 6 and 6, the Lord chose Jerusalem to put his temple there. Right. So that's where you're supposed to worship. The city. He, he, you ain't never going to see Christ or the disciples or anybody telling um, non-Israelites to come to uh, the temple and worship. You ain't going to see that. Uh, go ahead. Verse 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Right, because he knew that it, that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and we was going to go into captivity. Now jump down to uh, verse 25. The now woman, watch what the woman said. It's, it's no doubt she's of the northern kingdom 
of Israel. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 25. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Right, so she knows a Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. Right. And you know this because of prophecy in Deuteronomy 18, Genesis 22. You know that the Son of God is coming. Like, really, the only place you see that the Son of God is coming is in Genesis 22. Yet, when you get the time of Christ, they asking him, tell us plainly, art thou the Son of God? <laughs> they know it's coming. They're not ignorant. They study the scriptures. They just didn't have the spirit. Um, jump, what was that? You went to 21. Yeah, now jump down to 25. That was the one I just said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You was I, in the middle of it. Start it. from the top again. The book of St. John, chapter 4, and verse 25. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. When he is come, he will tell us all things. I got to hit this real quick. Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. No, verse 19. Okay. Verse 19. Not even 19. We're going to have to start at 18. Okay. Because I need to explain why she says that right there. Yeah, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Oh, no. Uh, start at 15. So I'll explain this. This is why she's saying he shall tell us all things. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up into mm -hmm. thee a prophet from the midst of thee, mm -hmm. of thy brethren. <laughs> he, he was of, he was Israel. Go ahead. Like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. So just like you had to hearken unto Moses, you have to hearken unto this prophet, right? Go ahead. According to all that thou desiredest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly. All right, hold on. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord. So that day was Exodus 20. They're at Mount Sinai. Right. And the Lord has given them the commandments. So any questions you have that you desire about the laws, he's going to show you. That's why she said he's going to teach us all things. Because right. of this right here. Now, um, drop down. To verse 19 is another pivotal verse. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words. So whosoever will not hearken unto my words, my words, go ahead. Which he shall speak in my name. Which he shall speak in my name. Christ, like Christ said, he didn't come with his own doctrine. Right. He came to do what the Father sent him to do. And then you got these Christians, because now what these apologetics are doing, they're saying you don't have to keep these commandments. You have to keep the law of Christ. That don't make no damn sense. I, every week I should not be sitting there saying that don't make no damn sense. Right. But that's Christianity for you. Right. The law of Christ. But Christ said, he, drop this. Okay. Drop this. Let's go back to John. Go to John 7. Oh, it, it's obvious they'd be getting on my nerves. Verse, <laughs> start at verse 14, okay. John 7 and verse 14. The book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, mm -hmm. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Right, he went up and taught. Go ahead. <laughs> and the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters? Have never learned. Right. Have so, never learned. So he did not go to the school of the Pharisees yeah. or the school of the Sadducees or the Herodians. He didn't do that. But he went to that synagogue every Sabbath day and he learned. And, he, and the Lord gave him a quick understanding. Yep. This is the lead. Christ is the lead spirit ever created. And they talk about how he know. Go ahead. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. But his that sent me. Right. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. But then you got these apologetics talking about you have to keep the law of Christ. Mm. What is wrong with them? 
And if you're watching, what is wrong with you? The law of Christ. It ain't nothing different. Keep going. Verse 17. If any man would do this, would do his will. Which is keeping the commandments, his law. Thy law is in my heart. Go ahead. He shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So when they get this law of Christ, and we, if you look that up, the law of Christ is one verse in the entire Bible. One verse. And they done built the whole doctrine around it. Just like they did with John 3.16. Right. All right, you can drop this. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> people, if it's one people get me fired up, man, this is tag on. It's one thing when you deal with uh, somebody that just don't know no better. They've been misled. But these brothers, they've learned this doctrine, and then they just keep trying to make it work, and it's not working. They trying to figure out what to do about the truth that's coming out. It's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Because it's of God. Yeah. So back to John 4. And we read. Yeah, read 25 again. 25 and 26 together. Okay. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah's cometh. Which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Right. So I am that prophet that's prophesied in the Holy Ghost. In the law. Now jump down to verse 28. Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? See that? Is, the, is not this the Christ? Is not this the Messiah spoken of to come in the prophecy? Right. Somebody, of another, what they, somebody of another nation, what they know about that? Why would they be waiting for the consolation of Israel? You know what that reminds me of? He, she said that he told her what she did. She never conversated with him about nothing. He told her what she did. Right. It reminded me of when Joseph gave the uh, uh, Pharaoh his own dream. He mm, told the yeah. Pharaoh, the yeah. Pharaoh never told him his dream. Right. And um, just like what's McCauley too uh, and Daniel. Yeah. He exactly. Yeah. yeah. He couldn't remember the dream. Daniel told hey, right, him his Daniel dream. Told him what <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Some nice powers. So she dropped her water pot mm. and dipped. She went ran to go and tell her people, yo, the Messiah here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This is this Israel, y'all. So let's go right back to what we read in Isaiah. That um that light. That light, it had let, that word and that light came into Jacob, meaning that the world, northern and southern kingdom. So there was more that we could have touched on right there in Isaiah 9. Um, but now let's go. So she went to get her brethren. Now let's jump down to verse 39. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the same of the woman, mm -hmm. which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Right, so many of the Samaritans. So remember in the prophecy, even Ephraim and Samaria. And Samaria. So these, this northern kingdom Israel. Go ahead. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Now, can you go and stay with people that ain't Israel? I wouldn't. Ain't that what Peter said? Watch with, uh, Acts, 10 Acts, <laughs> Acts 10 real quick. Acts 10. Let's go to Peter real quick. <laughs> you know what? 
I was thinking about Elder Ozai's. I think it was yesterday. We was missing him. And I remember El, he told me something one time, man. He said, the New Testament precepts itself. That's true. You don't even have to go back to the Old Testament because they'll say it in the New Testament. So watch this. So Christ went and abode with this, those Samaritans for two days. Um, Acts chapter 10 and verse 28. <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company mm -hmm. or come unto one of another nation. Oof. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Right. So when you see them going dwelling with somebody, it's an Israelite. Mm-hmm. It's 100% in Israelite. Since we're here in Acts, go to 16, I think. Verse. Watch this. Verse 14. Okay. The book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia... A seller of purple mm -hmm. of the city of Ty Thyatira. Thyatira. Thank you. Which worshiped God. Hold on. So see, like the Christians try to say that this woman was converted. She's a woman of Thyatira. That means she lived there. It doesn't give her nationality. Right. Um, but it says, which worship Worshiped God. God. Right. She's already worshiping the Lord. What she didn't know was Christ. That's why they're going around making disciples, teaching Christ. Go ahead. Heard us, mm -hmm. whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Right, so the Lord opened up her heart, her mind, mind. to understand Christ. Go ahead. And when mm -hmm. she was baptized mm -hmm. in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me, to be faithful to the Lord. Come into my house. Come into my house. Go ahead. And abide there. And she constrained us. Right. So she made them stay there. Nice. Now jump all the way down to verse 40. The book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 40. And they went out of the prison. So they had got locked up. But then when they were released, this is what happened. Go ahead. And entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Right. So even the brethren is at her house. Like you, it precepts itself. Christianity is going down. Oh my goodness. Back to John um, 4. We was at, uh, We read 40, so pick back up at um, 41. All right. The book of St. John, chapter 4 and verse 41. And many more believed because of his own words. So after hearing Christ speak, many more Samaritans believed. Go ahead. And said unto the woman, now we believe, mm -hmm. not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves. Mm. And know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. What world? You see, we have, the, our enemy has put one daggone verse, God so loved the world. Right. When you got all, look, John uses the word uh, like a hundred times in here. He uses the word world. Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> now John chapter 12 and verse 17 the book of St. John chapter 12 and verse 17 
The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave mm. and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause, the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Uh -huh. Behold, the world is gone after him. Hold on. The world is gone after him? Mm. The world is gone after Christ? The world of Israel. Right, because I've never seen it. They thought that the Christians were crazy. The followers of Christ were crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not other people following. Right. It's the Israelites. Oh, the world has gone after him. The Pharisees understand the world is Israel also. Verse, now jump to verse 43. The book of St. John, chapter 12, and verse 43. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on, on him that sent me. Right. You believe, if he's speaking the words of the Father. So you believe on the Father. That's who you really believe on. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> and he that seeth me, See of him that sent me. Right. So if you all you see is Christ and you don't see the Father, like in Christianity, that is a damn problem. Yo, you walking in darkness. Well, you got some that think they one in the same. That's the problem. Christianity. Right. But if they're one in the same, how can you so let's say you're a Christian and you believe that the Father and the Son are the same being. They're one and the same. Tell me, how do you go from God's commandments that was given in the Old Testament right. and then God's commandments given in the New Testament? That don't make no damn sense. Now you're talking about the law of Christ, but he's the God, he's the Father and the Son. That don't make no damn sense. Don't make no sense. Oh my goodness. When you ask them to explain this stuff, you get no response. If you want to see somebody squirm and wiggle, ask them to explain the Trinity. All you got to do is just ask them to explain. They'll look like a complete fool. Right. I've seen it too many times. Uh, go ahead. Verse 46. I am come a light into the world. A light into the world. See how every... You just go right back to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. A light into the world. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. That's in the law. You have to believe on him, Israel. Go ahead. Verse 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Right, to give repentance unto Israel. <laughs> Go ahead. He that rejected me and received not my words Damn. have one that judge of him. The Father and the law. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Go. Oh. Verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. <laughs> what I should say and what I should speak. You see, the more you like, this is why Christians don't use the word words of Christ. Mm -hmm. He too, he's just too straightforward. How do you have a law of Christ when he's given all, all the glory and honor to, to his father? father? Every time. <laughs> Every single time. And that, that's showing this the, the separate, you know, the separate. Yeah. Thing. He's his own being. He's always referencing, referencing the Father. The Father. Damn. Read that again. That was powerful. Read that, Jang, again. The book of St. John, chapter 12, and verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Oh, go ahead. And I know 
that his commandment is life everlasting. Whoa, his I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Go ahead. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Oh, my God. It's self-explanatory. And he came to give repentance for the world, the world of Israel. Hey, that, that shows you, too, that he sat down with his son and taught him. Even before he even came into the world. Before all things. Exactly. I mean, you know. Good God. But you had angels ministering under Christ. Mm. You know, you read that where they ministered unto him. They're telling him things. That's so, true. yeah. So, you know, but for them to say the laws of Christ, that jam is just, I just can't. I have a hard time even. I just think it's foolishness. I just put it like that. Yeah. It's to me it's foolishness. Now John chapter 17. Mm. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Start at Start at one, man. Yeah. I had five, but let's just start yeah. at one. <laughs> The book of St. John, chapter 17 and verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Hold on, hold on. No, he went and got a mirror and looked at himself and said, yeah. Father, the time has come. <laughs> These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Hold on, man, hold on. You got to be a damn schizophrenic or something. To believe Christianity. Something is wrong with you. It's the blindness. It's the blindness. That the Father has put on our people for disobedience. Yeah. Go ahead man. Go. Father. The hour has come. Mm -hmm. Glorify thy son. That thy son also may glorify thee. Right. Go ahead. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. If he's the father. Why would the father need to give him power over all flesh? Exactly. That's, this, is, this is why this is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And you don't see Christians using the words of Christ because he will destroy you. He will destroy your little simple doctrine. Go ahead. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Whom thou hast sent. His one, his only begotten son that he sent. Go ahead. Verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. How did he glorify the Father on earth? By walking the way that the Father would walk. Mm -hmm. That's how he glorified. So y'all, you have to understand, the commandments is the name of the Lord. That's him. That's how he walks, his reputation, all of that is his commandments. It shows you his person. Like they say in Christianity, his God's person. Well, God's person is manifest through the laws. Mm -hmm. It's manifest through them. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me. With thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, that's John one and one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. How did he manifest his name? They didn't say, uh, um, Yahweh. <laughs> right. They didn't say a name. At all. He, Christ, showed them how to walk in the commandments. That's how he manifested his name. Go ahead. Thine they were, mm -hmm. and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Hold on. The men which thou gavest me. Mm -hmm. Y'all can, on your own, you can go to Isaiah 8 and 18. 
It'll tell it say the men that thou hast given me, and they for signs and wonders in Israel. They did signs and wonders in right. Israel. Right. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Verse seven. Now they have hold on, hold on. It said, and they have kept my word, meaning his laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. He's just using different words to explain or say his law, statutes, and commandments. That's his name. That's his word. That's everything. Go ahead. Verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Uh -huh. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. So he, he manifested his name to them. He gave them the words which thou hast given me. Go ahead. And they have received them mm -hmm. and have known surely that I came out from thee. Mm -hmm. And they have believed that thou did send me. Right. You remember, you had to believe on him, like in a prophecy. Go ahead. Verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So he's praying for those people that are going to repent among Israel. He's praying for those ones, because remember, the Father is going to wake you up and lead you to Christ. He's going to do that. So he, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So they belong to the Father. So the Father has given them to the Son. Go ahead. Verse 10. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. Mm -hmm. And I am glorified in them. Right. So the disciples supposed to be glorified. I mean, Christ is supposed to be glorified in the disciples. We're supposed to walk like him. And show his glory. And show the Father's glory. Go ahead. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, mm. that they may be one as we are. Right. And wow. So we're all supposed to be on one dag on the cord. Right. This chapter just like the Trinity, done. Done. It's done in this chapter. So all of us need to be on one accord. Um to the law, to the testimony. The Father, Christ, us, we all supposed to be on one accord. Like I said, um, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are on one accord. They're all saying the same thing. The Father, the Son, and the law saying the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world. Amongst Israel. Go ahead. I kept them in thy name. In the commandments. I kept them in thy right. name. Right. Go ahead. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, mm -hmm. and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That, if you want to read about that, mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 109 is talking about um, Judas. Man, if you want, if, if you want, that's a tough thing to read right there, the stuff to say about that man. Good. Don't nobody want to be that man. <laughs> no. I don't even think Esau want to be that man. But go ahead. Verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Mm -hmm. You know he's going to go to the Father. Go ahead. I have given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So today... You look at the repenting Israelites today. Our people hate us more than other people. Man. There y'all go with that book. That book. Oh, y'all putting down women. Y'all putting down men. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they hate the Lord. They hate they the hate most high. Right. <laughs> go ahead. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest. Take them out of the world. Because they have to be among our people, Israel, the world, to teach them, to get them to repent. Go ahead. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Right. Keep them, keep us from the evil. Go ahead. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17. Sanctify them 
through thy truth. Mm. Thy word is truth. Yep, the commandments. Go ahead. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Right, that world into Israel. He Christ said, you know, go to your people right. and tell them to repent. Go into the world, your people, right. like we always open up with. Mm -hmm. Go to the children of the captivity. Go ahead. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Mm. <laughs> Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Right. That's why when we was further up, when we were saying, I pray not for the world, and I made the comment I did, is the disciples, we got to go out into our people and get them to repent. And so, like he said, I pray, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And so that go, that continues on and on and on. We got to get our people to repent. But go ahead, watch this. This one crushes the Trinity right here. Verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. So it said that they all may be in one. So, um, me, you, and other brothers, are we one person? Nope. But we're all supposed to have the same mind. Yep. I know it's a dumb question, but look at what we're dealing with, with in Christianity. They're saying that the Father and the Son are the same thing. Right. They own the same accord. So, and he's saying that they all may be one. All the disciples may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. Go ahead. That they also may be one in us. So wait a minute. So does, does that mean all the disciples and Christ and the Father is one person? Mm. Are you simple? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That the world... That the who? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. See, so all of us need to be on one accord. Go ahead. Verse 23. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Mm -hmm. And that the world... The, the who? And that the world... And that the world... May know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So, in Deuteronomy 18, did the Lord say that all nations, all peoples, had to know Christ? No! That world, again, is Israel. It's the northern and southern kingdom. All 12 tribes. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 18. We're almost done, y'all. This is. I, I've been enjoying this. This is really good. I'm enjoying this, James. Uh, verse 19. The book of St. John, chapter 18 and verse 19. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Mm. I even taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. So he spake openly unto the world um, in the temple and in the synagogues where Israel meets. So how is the world all people? Right. It's not. 100% not. Israel is that world without end. That's the world John keeps talking about. Verse 33. The book of St. John, chapter 18 and verse 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Right. Now jump to 37. So this is Pilate. Pilate mm -hmm. asked him, was he the king of the Jews? He didn't ask him, was he the king of the whole world? Right. He didn't say, I'm the king of the world. Right. No. And if he came into that world, wouldn't Pilate know exactly who he is instead of asking him? Right. Everybody would know about exactly. him. Exactly. 
Verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Mm -hmm. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Into the who? <laughs> into the world. And he, for this cause he came into the world. He only came amongst his people. Go ahead. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Right. Right. Last scripture. So, see, the world according, that's why I named it the world according to John. Mm -hmm. The world according to John is the 12 tribes of Israel. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know, I was thinking, this, I was reading this and it got me to thinking about that lamb of the first year. You're supposed to offer that lamb of the first year. Right. And I'm not saying this, in, this is in stone, mm -hmm. but you know... You do, according to the Day of Atonement, it happens every year. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that we are that lamb of the first year. Because when you look, and that's a beautiful law, you afflict your soul on that day and you're forgiven for all your past sins. Mm. You're basically a new creature. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by mm. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Have reconciled us to himself. Now, I got the definition. I pulled this up in the blue letter. I'm going to post it. Uh, reconcile. Whatever this Greek word is, it translates into reconcile. And I got two of them highlighted. To reconcile those who are at variance. Return to favor with. Be reconciled to one. So in other words, to be brought back into good favor. So Israel broke the covenant and was out of good favor with the Lord. So we're being reconciled. To the Father, being brought back, made good to the Father. Read that from uh, from the top again. Okay. Eighteen. The book of First Corinthians. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter five and verse eighteen. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. So He's using the Son Christ to reconcile the twelve tribes of Israel back. To himself. Go ahead. And have given to us the ministry of re reconciliation. So we have the ministry of going out and getting our people to repent so they can be reconciled back to the Father. To be reconciled back as a nation. Go ahead. To wit that God was in Christ. So the Most High was in Christ. That's why we always say that. Most High in Christ blessed. Right. Go ahead. Reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world. <laughs> Reconciling the world. The 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Like disregarding our past sins. Go ahead. And have committed us unto us the word of reconciliation. Right. Unto us. Reconciling the 12 tribes back. To him. All right. Uh, First Corinthians 13 and 13. That's going to do it for the nice class, y'all. The world according to John. All oh, praises to the Most High. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, mm -hmm. charity, mm -hmm. these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Right. The greatest of these is charity. So, 
let's have that uh, brotherly love because that's what charity is. Brotherly love at the highest level that we can and treat each other with the ultimate of respect. Um, uh, let me say this real quick. Alms is much needed. I'm going to post up uh, the app so y'all can um, send your alms in. Um, enjoy your Sabbath. Enjoy your day of rest. Commanded by the Lord. Hey, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Right. <laughs> so, I'm Brother Jacob. And I'm Brother Joel. And uh, we hope y'all learned something. Learned about the world tonight. So, with that, y'all, most high in Christ bless you all. And we say, Shalom. shalom.